In this fascinating video, we delve into the science behind tear gas and explore how it triggers the emotional response of crying. Join us as we break down the chemical composition of tear gas, its effects on the human body, and the physiological reactions that lead to tears. We'll discuss the mechanisms of the eyes and the nervous system that respond to these potent irritants, providing you with a deeper understanding of why tear gas affects us the way it does. Whether you're curious about crowd control methods, chemical agents, or the science of human emotions, this video is packed with intriguing insights and valuable information. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more fascinating science content. Keep watching. In the midst of a demonstration full of passion and outcry, a loud bang breaks the air. A silver canister shoots through the sky and in its liberating flight it releases a thick white fog enveloping everything in its path. The atmosphere becomes suffocating and the crowd, gripped by panic, scatters in all directions, trying to escape the imminent effects. But it's too late. The first bouts of coughing and cries echo through the air, signaling the relentless arrival of an invisible enemy. Your eyes burn like embers, you feel a discomfort similar to the worst flu, and your tears flow uncontrollably. It's an uncontrollable reaction to the terrible sting, and no matter how much you scream or suffer, you'll endure it for a while. This is tear gas, that dreaded riot control weapon making its appearance and unleashing chaos. Today, I invite you to dive into the history, effects, and uses of this irritating agent and discover why it is the primary tool used worldwide to disperse crowds. But don't worry, in this case, you won't need a gas mask or a balaclava dot. Keep watching. Let's start by clarifying that the term tear gas is quite flexible. Any chemical that makes you cry and cough can be called by that name. However, there is a specific group of compounds, such as CS gas and CN gas, that are used by the police as riot control weapons due to their low toxicity. Before diving into their effects, let's briefly review their history. Keep watching. World War I was the stage for the introduction of tear gases being one of the most used chemical weapons during the conflict. In the early 20th century, the Chemical Weapons Convention put an end to their use in warfare, but with a small exception, although armies could no longer use chemical substances in combat, these gases could still be employed for domestic disturbances. Since then, tear gas has become the primary ally of riot police forces worldwide. Before the tears, the sore throat, and the nasal secretions, Tear gas burns in ways you can't imagine. These chemicals cause unbearable pain in the eyes, skin, lips, and lungs, especially if a large amount is inhaled. During the first few seconds of exposure, the brain sends an immediate pain signal that results in uncontrollable crying and the involuntary closing of the eyelids. Then comes the coughing, also uncontrollable, along with nausea and vomiting that can last several minutes after contact. This is why tear gas is such a commonly used weapon to disperse protests. No matter how furious a group of protesters is, they cannot withstand its incapacitating effects, and they are defenseless. It doesn't matter if it's a massive, muscular individual, an expert in mixed martial arts, if they inhale enough gas, they'll be completely neutralized. As I mentioned earlier, the term tear gas is somewhat misleading. In reality, the star of the show isn't a gas, but a powder that disperses in the air, forming a dangerous mist. To spread, this solid substance needs a dispersal agent, like methylene chloride. Additionally, a typical tear gas grenade contains several additional chemicals for the thermal dispersion of the irritant. Keep watching. The operation of a tear gas grenade is similar to that of a fragmentation grenade. It also has a fuse, an adapter, a mixture igniter, and the filler, which may contain various irritating elements. The main goal of tear gas substances isn't just to make you cry, but to activate as many pain receptors as possible through direct contact with cavities, skin, wounds, etc. Any part of the body susceptible to pain becomes the playground of the so-called tear gas. This is a key difference from other gaseous compounds such as sarin gas, which causes muscle paralysis and asphyxiation, very different and much more lethal effects. While substances like sarin are designed to kill, tear gas is meant to cause prolonged pain without being lethal.
Tear agents can be categorized by the pain receptors they activate. The first category includes substances that act on TRPA-1 receptors, such as CS gas, the most commonly used compound by U.S. security forces due to its rapid action. The first symptoms of irritation appear within 20 seconds of exposure and can last up to 30 minutes or more, even after moving away from the affected area. One of the toughest challenges faced by some U.S. soldiers is prolonged exposure to tear gas in a closed room. Although they initially wear gas masks, they are soon ordered to remove them and answer simple questions like their name, rank, and identification number which becomes extremely difficult when all their senses are assaulted by a chemical designed to cause pain, tearfulness, and respiratory distress. This training helps them build confidence in their protective equipment and understand the devastating effects of this riot control tool. Similar exercises are conducted in countries like Mexico, Argentina, and Colombia. Keep watching! Children and shorter individuals are especially vulnerable to the effects of tear gas, as the gases tend to concentrate near the ground. People with chronic respiratory conditions such as asthma, face even higher risks due to airway inflammation. In recent years, an improved version of CS gas known as CS2 or CX has been used, which lingers longer in the environment, intensifying its effects. This gas is more potent and can disrupt larger crowds. Another compound that activates TRPA1 receptors is CR gas, which is 10 times more potent than CS gas, making its use rare. However, its use was reported during the Arab Spring protest, with devastating effects on some civilians. The second category of tear agents includes substances that activate TRPV1 receptors, usually derived from capsaicin, the compound found in chili peppers. A synthetic version is used by the U.S. Border Patrol. Although these compounds trigger fewer allergic reactions, their oily base makes them harder to remove from the skin, prolonging the pain. In extreme cases, they can cause corneal abrasion, literally damaging the outer layer of the eye. Keep watching! Throughout history, protesters have developed various countermeasures to tear gas. These include gas masks, swimming goggles, and cut water bottles used as protection. Activists in various countries such as the United States, Hong Kong, and Venezuela have used antacid medications like Malox diluted in water to mitigate the effects of the gas. During the 2019 Hong Kong protests, demonstrators became experts in combating tear gas, using protective clothing and collecting police-fired canisters to throw them back. The best way to avoid the effects of tear gas is to follow your instincts and move away from the cloud as quickly as possible. Although tear gas can effectively disperse crowds, its use remains controversial. In some cases, it causes stampedes or escalates violence, putting many lives at risk. Now that you know the history, workings, and effects of tear gas, you'll better understand the debate surrounding its use. Keep watching. The lacrimal glands located just below our eyebrows are responsible for producing basal tears, which lubricate and protect our eyes. However, when tear gas binds to the TRPV1 receptors, the lacrimal glands receive a signal to produce excess tears, which are designed to flush out the irritant and protect the eyes from further damage. This is why, when we're exposed to tear gas, our eyes start tearing profusely, helping to dilute and remove the chemical agent. When we take a step back and look at the big picture, it's astounding to see how tear gas exploits the intricate relationships between our nervous system, sensory receptors, and chemical compounds to produce such a strong response. By understanding the science behind tear gas, we can appreciate the fascinating complexities of the human body and its incredible ability to respond to threats. Keep watching. In summary, tear gas works by binding to TRPV1 receptors activating the nervous system and stimulating the lacrimal glands to produce excess tears. This intricate dance of chemistry and biology is what makes tear gas such an effective tool for crowd control. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Instagram where there's new content every day and many surprises coming soon. Don't miss them. Without further ado, I wish you an excellent day. Keep watching.